So the San Francisco 49ers ruled out Christian McCaffrey on the day of their game against the New York Jets in the season opener, leaving third-year running back Jordan Mason to step into the starting role. He answered the bell with an unbelievable performance as the Niners whacked the Jets, and I wanted to dive into the tape. So today we're looking at the incredibly sculpted 49ers run game, the importance of George Kittle and Kyle Yushik, the addition of rookie guard Dominic Puny, and why I think the San Francisco 49ers are headed back to the Super Bowl. We will be covering the film all season long here on the channel. So if you enjoy this kind of content, make sure you subscribe for future videos. I'll start this off by saying that this defense that the Niners rolled is no slouch of a defense. Robert Sala knows what he's doing. He's built a strong unit with a lot of very talented pieces, and the 49ers still wrecked them for almost 40 minutes. Now, at least the Jets forced a three and out on the opening drive, because after that, it was a whole lot of extended drives, keeping the football away from Aaron Rodgers and racking up points. Let's jump in on the second drive of the game following the Brees Hall fumble. It stood out to me in watching this game in detail how exhausting it must be to try and match these formations for four quarters. The Niners are always in motion pre-snap. Somebody is moving, whether it's Debo, Yushik, Kittle, you name it. They're forever forcing the defense to think and adjust. This is an outside run with Debo, with Yushik motioning over from left to right to block. Debo does a great job cutting this run back, which gives us the first look at the 49ers getting to the second level untouched. It happens a lot, not just in this game, in every game. Nobody creates wide open lanes like the Niners. Debo shoots the gap here, and had the center got a block on CJ Mosley, he likely gets even further upfield to the safety level. That's a great linebacker making a good play. Let's look at Jordan Mason's first big run of the game. Look at how far he gets before he is as much as touched. This is 12 personnel, two tight ends, with Eric Salbert motioning back across the field. On the snap, the speed at which these guys get to the second level is wild. If I pause this at the point that Jordan Mason collects the football, look at the wall of Niners jerseys in front of him. There are four guys here over the middle already steaming downfield, while rookie guard Dominic Puny and Salbert part the waves. Jordan Mason now has a huge lane to run into, with Kittle and two linemen out in front to block the three linebackers. The result is a run springing for nearly 15 yards before Mason even reaches contact. An elite level back might see this developing and bounce it outside of Debo, but I like Mason's style. He's less Less finesse, more bully ball. He's going to run right over you as he does here, taking this safety for a four yard ride. The next one is back to Debo, and this time the left guard and fullback pull from the left side to block out in front of him. They come around the back of Kittle's block, seal the edge with the guard, while Yushik lead blocks in the lane. Now this is actually set up perfectly, and I think if Debo had a tad more patience on it, he could have followed Kyle and given himself a one-on-one -on -one with Source on the outside. I do also think that 94 forces him back inside, which kind of cuts that off, but again, they were very close to breaking this wide open. Now we have a toss left with Kittle in motion pre-snap. Their communication is elite. Kittle touches the inside rusher knowing that Yushik will seal that off behind him and then gets out to help Trent Williams hold the safety from making a play. Debo does just enough to let Jordan Mason squeeze through. Maybe a little block in the back there, but again, the level of blocking across the board is just brilliant. And when you've been selling that so hard early in the game, these linebackers know they need to react. Even a second late against this run, and you're in a lot of trouble. So they're downhill fast on what turns out to be a fake handoff. No contain on the play, Purdy bootlegs out, and when he turns upfield, he's got acres of space. He takes off, right decision, first down. Even when the play breaks down, Jordan Mason's downhill running style means he is always falling forwards. He runs right into one of his O-linemen on this play, but still gets several yards out of it. Eye formation here and a subtle pre-snap movement from Salbert, who's playing the fullback on this rep. George Kittle chips the first man before getting downfield, and Salbert picks up that first man with his block. The toss right and those two blocks get Mason outside of the tackle, and again, there's a clear lane. He's just got to beat this D-lineman through the gap, which he does, and picks up a another nice gain. Are you not already exhausted just watching this? Trying to play in the front seven against this offense must be so freaking tiring. You are getting thrown around, often by multiple guys on a single play, and they are constantly pounding that second level. It's a clinic, it really is. 
Guys at the second level again here. I'm not sure if the design was to cut this back or if Jordan Mason is improvising based on the lane closing because of Quinn and Williams. He may also be reading Quinn and Williams and reacting accordingly based on which side he goes to. He ends up cutting it back all the way outside of the tight end on the near side. So perhaps it's a design counter. I just couldn't tell on this one. He then makes Sauce miss entirely clutching at air as Mason barrels downfield for more yards. Kittle motions on this one and he's the guy sealing to the outside to help create this lane. Everybody else is going to block inside. Great blocks here from Yushik and the guards and tackles getting downfield. Every man is doing his job. The rookie Dominic Puny is almost blocking two guys here, but I will say that McKibbitz practically tackles this guy. Like, is that legal? It didn't feel legal. Anyway, they spring this for a huge gain up the sideline and now they're in the red zone. We're 18 yards out here and in my mind, this touchdown should have stood. At the snap, the whole flow goes right right every blocker to the right and again look at the big boys out in front clearing the way look at puny again that's a rookie making his first start man played tackle at kansas everybody thought he'd make a great guard in the nfl and so far he looks the part right at home and again great drafting from the niners Again, between these three linemen and their blocks, you can see the lane. Then it's just a race to the end zone. Now they flagged Debo here on a holding call, I think it was, just holding onto the jersey a touch too long against Source, and it's called. There was zero chance that Source Gardner was making that tackle, though, with the speed that Jordan Mason was running towards the end zone. So it was a shame to see this one get wiped off the board. And then look at Puny again on this one, this time on Quincy Williams. This is practically the same toss play to the other side, again, with big blockers getting to the second level in a hurry. Puny seals off Williams with a stonewall block in the middle of the field. Jordan Mason then finds a lane down the left side and this ends up being a really good open field tackle from 36 which is vet safety Chuck Clark. And then a little pass play action from Jordan Mason. They didn't call on him for it much in this game. In fact, I think this ended up being his only catch, but it was a big one against tight coverage on third down, stepping up in the absence of CMC. This one isn't a run play, but I just liked it. Debo motions inside of Kittle here on the near side, exposing man coverage with DJ Reed on him. Then on the snap, Debo releases outside of Kittle, forcing Reed into a full sprint to try and stay with him before he snaps it off, again breaking inside and gets vertical. Why? open. Easy read for Purdy, big completion over the middle, nightmare for DJ Reed. Then they ran a similar inside stem here on DJ Reed like two plays later, this time on the far side with Jawan Jennings. Purdy finds him inside the numbers, again a really good throw, and they're in the red zone again. Now, Ayuk should have caught this, but the ball placement from Purdy was insanely good. Corner route out of the slot, inside release. Michael Carter has pretty good coverage, but Purdy puts this football on the money, over Carter's shoulder and right into the hands of an outstretched Brandon Ayuk. I think a couple of weeks into the season, he catches this. Maybe a touch rusty, but what a ball that is. I love how much pride these guys take in their blocks. Look at Kittle here. He's the motion man coming across to seal the edge rusher. He doesn't get a clean block and that defender ends up bringing Mason down up the middle. The safety had done enough to trip him up, at least I think so. So this wasn't going to be a touchdown, but Kittle's reaction to imperfection on the rep is amazing to see. One of my favorite players to watch, impactful on every play, even when not touching the football. This was superb, and with all the dirty work that he does that you won't hear about or see show up on the stat sheet, I love seeing Kyle Yushik get the football. It's a fake handoff to the running back, and the fullback runs right through the line of scrimmage before running and out and up. He gets lost in the coverage, runs right by everybody, and Purdy puts this football right on him, taking the Niners down to the two-yard line. I did think for a moment that it almost looks like safety Ashton Davis sidesteps him because these defenders are so used to him blocking them out of the game. When he realizes that Jordan Mason doesn't have the football and this is a pass play, he tries to scramble back, but it's too late. It's such a cool looking play and again, a really good concept, giving the Jets fits on defense. And again, with the Niners in the red zone and the amount of force that they apply when blocking, keeping them out for three straight plays when they're inside the five yard line is almost impossible. They they manage it on this first play with Jalen Holmes actually making a great play to get inside of Trent Williams and blow up the inside run. But that's only first down. On the very next play, Ayuk motions from right to left, bringing a man defender over with him. Kittle then fakes his motion and goes back to the run side, lined up behind the offensive line. This is his man here, but on the snap, Kittle cuts inside between guard and tackle to block the linebacker. Kittle's man defender never senses Debo on the outside and quickly gets blocked out of this play while the outside corner gives up the gap with an over pursue. 
Did that make any sense? Did I articulate that right? I'm not 100%. Anyway, this is such a beautifully executed counterplay down in the red zone with all 11 guys in perfect symphony to get the ball over the line. I love explosive plays as much as anybody, but something like this is like listening to a world-class orchestra with perfect timing and rhythm. It's magic, and the Niners do it better than anybody. Another nod to Kittle and Yushik on this one, both with strong blocks to get Mason into a one-on-one -on -one with Source. He gets north and south up the middle, dragging a couple of defenders for a few extra yards. Again, talk about wearing down a defense. Now, Jordan Mason wasn't having all the fun, though. He was still doing his bit for the rest of the offense, doing a really good job here to pick up an outside rusher so that Purdy could get the throw off. It isn't complete, but just something worth calling out. More of Kyle Yushik here, leading through the gap with a pulling guard to create space up the middle. On this one, if Dominic Puny had kept going across the line and blocked 99, everyone else here was blocked off, and it would have been a foot race between Mason and the safety. I suppose even the Niners are capable of a less than absolutely perfect run play. This one was just a great throw from Purdy. The pocket gets pretty condensed on him too, but his poise is always really good. He finds Ayuk right down the sideline with a pinpoint pass and again moves the chains. Then on this one, they use Jordan Mason as the lead blocker on an end around for Debo Samuel. We're late in the game now and the Niners are still finding ways to get creative and move the football. Mason doesn't quite get his block and DJ Reed ends up making the tackle with this play not quite working out. But again, it was interesting to see the way that they drew it up. All right, last one. Yushik again here, this time blocking two guys out of this outside run with one single block. Mason does well here to find the sideline, and then it's just burst of speed to beat the guy downfield. Finishes the run, too, at the sideline. All round, a really strong game. He played really well, but man, this blocking scheme, Kittle, Yushik, and Co. are on another level. Ultimately, I think we're looking at a really good Jets defense. I really do. Salah was one of the best defensive coordinators in football with the Niners. And over time, while they've had their struggles offensively, the Jets have built a really good unit on the defensive side. And Robert Salah has good depth across the board. If healthy, they will be one of the best in the league again this year. So with that in mind, watching the way San Francisco manipulated the clock and put together long drive after long drive, running the football extremely efficiently and catching the Jets out with pass plays whenever they felt like it, this was really something as an opening act for the 2024 season. Jordan Mason was superb in relief of CMC, but to do that to a good defense without one of your best weapons is wild. Through one week, and I know it's only one week, the Niners are the best team in football, the most complete team in football. This might be their year. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave a like on your way out. I appreciate you being here and I will see you guys in the next one.